Hello and welcome to an Encore presentation today on automation solutions for high mix production. My name is John Einberger. I'm the Horizontal Machining Center product manager here at Makino and uh, we'll run you through the presentation here today. After the discussion ends, I'll come back to you live to address any questions that you might have, anything that comes up. Uh, pretty easy for you to let us know what your questions are. You should see on your screen right now circled uh, an area where it says chat. That also will show up in the upper right hand corner of your screen that you're seeing live. Uh, simply click on that, enter the questions. I'll be able to see them live. Like I said, we'll, I'll come back to you at the end of the uh, pre recorded area and address those questions at that point in time. So, without further ado, let's take you to that. Hello, my name is John Einberger. I'm product manager at Makino. I'd like to talk to you today about some of the automation solutions that um, we're finding a great deal of acceptance in a ever-changing manufacturing marketplace, uh, specifically the introduction to the Makino MMC2. When we talk about the MMC2 or any similar product uh, that might exist in the uh, competitive marketplace, it all starts out with a question. What type of production suits your environment? What are you dealing with from the standpoint of production on a day-to-day -day basis? Is it a combination of high volume, low mix, where you're making hundreds of thousands of the same part all day, every day, every month? Is it the opposite end of the spectrum, a high mix, low volume, where you might make 20 of these, 50 of those, 100 of those in an ever-changing landscape? Or is it medium mix with seasonal volumes where maybe you have a production scenario where you make um, snowmobile components in the summertime and outboard motor components in the wintertime and have to do that switch over between the two. Also the other scenario that comes into play is their transition as your business continues to grow. Does that landscape, does that production scenario um, mature as, as your business continues to grow? All of these possess great business opportunities as well as very unique challenges. Today what we'd like to focus on is one of these scenarios in particular, what we'll call the high mix conundrum. Basically, um, we see this uh, very common when people start the movement from uh, small parts manufacturing into more complex parts manufacturing, start introducing more capability into their uh, manufacturing um, scenario. Many times we see customers make the very natural move from a vertical machining center to a horizontal machining center in the effort of really optimizing spindle uptime and spindle utilization. So that move from the vertical machining center to the horizontal machining center uh, possesses of some things that really aid in that uptime of spindle utilization by offering two pallets instead of the traditional one table on a vertical machining center. So you can have one pallet set up for a uh, specific job, the other pallet set up for a very different job. Good illustration right here. The advantages that that user uh, sees in the move to the horizontal machining center Better spindle utilization. Again, think about that scenario where you can have one pallet set up for one job, another pallet set up for another job. As the pallet in the machine is being worked on, the operator of the machining center can unload and reload that fixture that's not in the machining center. Gravity works to your benefit in the move from a vertical to a horizontal. When you machine and the chips are created, they'll naturally fall down, get out of the way, uh, avoid recutting, and increase efficiency. Three-sided access, the access to not only that top face that you would see on a, on a uh, three-axis vertical machining center, but that face as well as the face either on the left and the face on the right. Minimizes the number of work holdings, maximizes uh, product quality as a result. Automatic pallet changer is uh, typically going to be part of that horizontal machining center as described a moment ago. Very great productivity potential until that mix continues to grow. At that point in time, changeover from one job to another job outside of the two pallets begins to affect capacity. As an effect of that, you lose spindle utilization, you lose throughput as the machine is sitting there essentially idle while it's being changed over from, again, one job to another. 
So the question naturally comes up uh, to us on a regular basis, can automation help out? And the answer is yes. With that, I'd like to introduce the Makino MMC2 product. A very good illustration of a uh, uh, starting point MMC cell, one machining center, the uh, material handling system associated with it. We'll break it down and get into the individual components here in just a moment. So what is the MMC2? At the most basic level, it's an automated pallet delivery system. So think about it as the muscle behind the movement of material to a machine, to a centralized area for storage, to another centralized area when the operator interfaces with that fixture. Services one or more horizontal machining centers. It's a central point for input of raw material into the cell and output of the finished material from the cell into the uh, follow-on operations or to pack out and shipment to your customer. It features integrated pallet storage areas, what we call pallet stocker stands. The other side of the equation, the brains, the cell controller. We're going to talk about that here in a little while. Um, without the brain of the system, basically, uh, you would be responsible then for manually scheduling activities. We'll talk about what we do from an automated standpoint with respect to that area of cell operation. So let's look at some of the MMC uh, cell components themselves. It really all starts out, um, as you would expect, with the machining center, again, one or more in the MMC uh, style system. On the, typically on the opposite side of the uh, rail, pallet stocker stands. Pallet stocker stand, think about that as a resting place for a fixture that's not currently in use, either in the machine or being tended to by the operator, whether that fixture is loaded or unloaded. It has an assigned spot to live inside of the cell when not actively being uh, worked on. The work setting station, the centralized point for that operator interface to the uh, fixture. Again, part load, part unload. The vehicle, the prime mover, uh, the one uh, source of movement within the cell, again, of pallets from one location to another. The cell control. The cell control, again, being the brains of the system. A little bit better picture here, the way that Makino provides the cell control inside of an air-conditioned uh, NEMA 12-style enclosure. Since that PC does live out on the shop floor, we want to harden it uh, to the degree that makes it very reliable. Safety fence that surrounds the cell with interlock maintenance doors from a safety perspective. So a little walk-around video uh, just showing what a typical cell looks like. This particular cell features the Makino A81NX horizontal machining centers, a view down across the work setting stations over towards the tool magazine of the A81NX kind of comes into view here. Shifting focus, now we're looking at the front end of the machines that interfaces to the rail. View up top, just looking at overall cell layout, again looking at the tool magazines at the machining centers themselves and a view back down looking through the rail. We'll take a ride here for a moment. Uh, camera on a pallet being transported from the front of the machine on the far end of the cell all the way down. You can see a very good view of what that front end of the machine looks like as it interfaces to the MMC ready to accept pallets. We're going to come across past the last machine and we'll look at the workset station, which again is the location in the MMC where that operator is going to load and unload parts from the fixture, and he backs up into a pallet stocker stand. So what are some of the advantages that are associated with the MMC2 cell? First, the way that Makino designs and delivers this system, it's very customizable. It's built on modular building blocks, so it allows the system to be tailored from a layout standpoint to fit your needs, and that covers a variety of different areas. Um, first, you have to start thinking about your factory. How do parts flow into and out of the machining area? What's the most advantageous place for the work setting stations to be situated? Maybe adjacent to a loading dock, maybe adjacent to uh, follow-on operations that come after the machining, or operations that maybe come prior to the machining. So again, a lot of uh, flexibility from the standpoint of that layout. 
We want to maximize operator efficiency. One of the biggest pieces of feedback that we get on a regular basis as customers implement the MMC is now they have opportunities for the operators instead of running around from machine to machine to machine to unload and reload parts. Now since that loading is centralized, since that loading is more um, managed from the standpoint of part flow, the operators oftentimes find themselves with capacity to do other things, maybe post-process gauging, maybe inspection, maybe some light assembly. So we think about it from the standpoint of the layout of the cell, where does that operator need to be in order to do those um, other ancillary operations? The MMC is expandable, production is scalable as your production and business needs change. So as that demand curve changes, with again the modular layout of the MMC, very easy to adapt that cell from the standpoint of the starting point configuration to grow it over time. Uh, using that same layout that we started with at the beginning of the presentation, one machine, two workset stations on the opposite side of the rail, in this case, uh, six pallet stocker stands, very easy to add equipment to that to grow that rail, to add pallet stockers, to add additional equipment. So again, from a one machine, to a two machine cell, just as a, a very simple example. Reliability obviously is a very important aspect of uh, any type of a system along these lines. When you think about all the work that, that that vehicle does as far as picking up pallets and fixtures and loading them from one area to another, um, that vehicle has to be very reliable. We do a couple of things to really uh, add reliability in uh, servicing the vehicle. If you think about what that vehicle needs, it needs an electrical connection to get power, but it also needs signal connections in order to get data so it knows what it's doing. It can measure certain values, send data back to the cell control. And we handle that in a fairly unique way. Most systems in the marketplace use a series of cables that fold and unfold over time. Uh, that cable will work harden. Uh, what we've gone to is a very different system Good example here, the vehicle, the lower rail that the vehicle rides on that's affixed to the floor, the upper rail that provides stability for the vehicle, and adjacent to that, a bus bar. So what you might be familiar with in an overhead crane in your facility right now, we use very similar technology to transmit the power to the vehicle through that overhead bus bar instead of that very big cable set that gets very expensive. Really, the only wear parts in the bus bar are the guide tabs. So very reliable from the standpoint of power transmission. Um, the other side of this is the signal transmission. Instead, again, of the cable that, that folds and unfolds, we use optical uh, sending and receiving units to transmit that data to and from the vehicle. The MMC is a Makino product, a very important distinction in the marketplace. It's not a third-party piece of equipment that you have to deal with a, a separate third-party uh, supplier or vendor. It's a Makino product, so really um, one-stop shopping from the standpoint of not only the initial specification and procurement, but also factory support today and from a long-term perspective. So I want to step away for a minute, uh, turn it over to one of our customers that made this transition that I described earlier in the presentation today, and let them walk you through for a couple of minutes what their thought process was around the decisions that they made. New Dimensions, we we do a range of um, contract machining, anywhere from small job shop orders all the way through large production volume type work. Um, we have um, kind of a specialty in the fluid power market. The way we got to the Makino FMS systems that we rely on so heavily today has been just the natural progression or development of meeting the customer demands of the market. We used to get by with setting up a setting up a machine and then running out a couple hundred or a couple thousand pieces as a production run. You can put those parts on the shelf and then distribute them out as a typical you know shop would do. And with the industry changing, uh, customers not wanting to commit to inventory, not forecasting part usage, it really has changed to where you have to be able to produce on demand, no excess inventory, and you need to be able to do it economically. 
we've been able to produce the same volume of parts with 70% less labor per part going through this technology transition into the FMS systems. The initial Makino purchase we made of the FMS system was definitely based on Makino's system being developed themselves. The seamless integration with the pallet system and the machines was a big selling point to us versus a third-party system and dealing with an additional company. Um, that was definitely the selling point when we made our first purchase. Now, the 15 machines we've bought since then have definitely been a result of um, Makino as a partner. Uh, Makino's ap application support is second to none. Their maintenance technicians are always extremely responsive. It's very uncommon for us to have somebody here, you know, if not the next day, the same day um, to service our machines. It's very uncommon for that to not be the case. So Makino's partnership has been a big factor in us staying with Makino on all the subsequent purchases since that first sell. And we definitely see that partnership lasting into the future. So again, kind of an interesting transition from the standpoint of New Dimensions business. Just to recap, uh, the movement really to uh, just-in-time manufacturing and the way that the MMC style system facilitates that. From a popularity standpoint, the MMC2 uh, continues to be a very popular uh, product in the Makino product lineup. Um, Talking about the area that we cover, specifically in North America, Brazil, and Argentina, over 650 MMC2 cells installed to date, continuing to grow. Over 2,000 Makino machining centers in those cells. So not all cells are one machine, not all cells are uh, eight or ten machines, uh, kind of a broad-based um, population of different cell sizes out there. So what configurations are possible with the MMC? Um, basically, all of the Makino, what we call our one series horizontal machining centers, can be implemented into the MMC. Other machines beyond that are T series machines can be implemented into the MMC. And on the very large scale, our MAG series machines can be implemented into a proper sized MMC. Um, really, what the uh, caveat is, is that within a given MMC, the pallets all need to have the same cone spacing on the bottom. So if you think about the cones as the uh, implements that are used to secure a pallet inside of a machine in the uh, work zone area, as long as that cone spacing, that pitch from cone to cone is the same, uh, those machines can fit into the MMC. Where that really plays is from a generational aspect. Uh, if we look at our 400 millimeter horizontals, for instance, current product is the A51NX, predecessor product A51, um, predecessor to that, our A55 series, all of those machines from the standpoint of legacy use that same pallet cone pitch. That legacy of machines can all be contained in the same MMC, a very useful feature from the standpoint of a customer who looks to grow things slowly over time as the machining centers change. That pallet stays the same. They all use the same MMC. It supports the full work zone of the machine. By that I mean, if you think about the payload that can go on the pallet from a work zone diameter standpoint and from a height standpoint measured from pallet top to the top of the payload, the MMC being a Makino design product designed to work with the machines supports the utilization of that complete work zone. Uh, we see that very different uh, oftentimes when third party uh, uh, suppliers get involved. Maybe they're not designing their system specifically around the machine. Um, that can compromise the ability to use the full capability of the machining center. From a layout standpoint, we can support up to 15 machining centers in a given MMC cell, up to four work setting stations, again, the input and output of work pieces going to and from the uh, fixtures, and up to 200 pallet stocker stands, the resting position for a uh, fixture pallet combination that's not currently in use. Flexibility really is the key point. Let's take a moment and talk about the brains behind the system. I'm just going to hit the high level of this. I'm going to uh, talk about a uh, coming up um, Experience Center event that will really dive into the details. But just to kind of hit the high points of what that brain looks like, uh, what we call the MAS A5 cell control. Uh, very um, common, uh, very comfortable graphic user interface. But let's start first with talking about what does it do. 
Uh, most importantly, it handles the dynamic scheduling of the part machining and pallet handling of the MMC. Dynamic from the standpoint of it doesn't, um, once you set a production priority, it doesn't stick to that regardless of what may, may or may not have changed inside of your manufacturing operation, but dynamically will adjust that to meet your needs in the most expedient manner. It manages system resources such as both tools and fixtures as tools come into and out of machines, as fixtures may become into and out of the cell. Uh, that basically is a repository for all that data to manage the utilization of those items within the production cell itself. It manages the NC program data that gets downloaded to each machine. It manages and stores the production data that goes into building that dynamic scheduling. And it provides connectivity to link this cell to your shop network to provide remote viewing uh, opportunities so that you can see from a variety of different locations, maybe in your plant, maybe outside of your plant, what's going on with that system. Let's go into a little bit more detail on each of these areas. Uh, starting out with the graphic user interface that I had alluded to uh, at the beginning here. So very familiar Windows-based um, look and feel to it. Uh, Outlook style pane should be very familiar to a lot of users out there, very easy to navigate. Machine icons uh, show the status of each of the machines in the cell, and we'll jump into that in more detail here in a moment. Likewise, we show the vehicle status, what's going on with that vehicle, is it transporting uh, fixture X from location one to location two, what's going on with that vehicle displays the current work setting uh, station operations, what's going on in each of the work set stations. And likewise, it gives information for every pallet assigned to every pallet stocker stand within the cell. So you can look at it on a pallet by pallet basis. So diving into a bit more, more detail, the machine monitor. So this screen is what's pulled up when you click on a given machine, give you a, a very detailed view of what's going on at the machining center itself. Production order management is the offshoot of this. This is where uh, production orders are input into the cell and basically allowed to be executed to. So it relates what we call production orders to parts machining. Think about this as multifaceted also. Maybe a production order has a variety of different parts associated with it. That production order will, will drive the machining of each of those individual parts as a remote entity or as a unique entity then going into the operation of the cell itself. So you can input start dates, you can input end dates, think about that as a must be completed by date, and again that allows that dynamic scheduling to happen. Um, multiple production orders can be created for individual part numbers. Maybe you have a uh, production order for an assembly that contains uh, two of this part, three of this part, and one of those but a different assembly that also uh, may use those same part numbers. A lot of ability to customize how that part flow looks, linking part numbers to production orders. And production order dates and priorities are used to drive the dynamic schedule. Again, maybe your production need changes, maybe you have that emergency job that comes in that supersedes anything else that might be going on in the cell you can input that emergency order very easily into that uh, front end uh, MAS A5 uh, unit to drive, that to drive that production of that needed emergency item. NC program management happens at the cell control level. So instead of uh, with a scenario of standalone machining centers where the operator or uh, maybe manufacturing engineering personnel are making program changes at the machining center itself, Instead, the program changes are done offline, brought into the cell, and the cell then manages that data, manages that NC program, and distributes it to the machine uh, as you send production to a given machining center. So with that said, all of the NC programs are registered at the cell control. The NC programs prior to being distributed to a machining center, uh, say for instance the cell control is considering using uh, machining center number two in the system to run uh, a production order, prior to sending that production order it's going to look through that NC program, find all of the tool calls that are in, in the uh, uh, program, and ensure that those tools are not only registered and resident 
within the machining center that it, that it intends to send it to, but they all have adequate life to complete the production order. So not, uh, not wanting to create this scenario where you send a production job to a machine and the machine is not equipped to handle it. NC programs, since the uh, data management is done at the cell control level, are transmitted to the machining center uh, when a uh, production order is issued to that machining center, always to ensure that the latest version of that program is resident in the machining center um, for it to do the machining uh, program too. On the return side, after the production is complete, the machining center uh, returns to the cell control production data, so that can be pulled into a variety of different reports from a, a status monitoring and reporting basis. Tool resource management, also done at the uh, MAS A5 cell control. This, uh, as I talked about in a bit of detail a moment ago, this eliminates that waste of time of sending a production job to a machine when the machine is not equipped to do that from a tooling standpoint. Oftentimes, I had the scenario very early on of seasonal production. Again, my scenario was uh, making uh, winter uh, devices, uh, snowmobile uh, powertrains in the summer, outboard powertrains in the winter, a uh, real scenario from a customer of ours. They may have a scenario where they want to physically pull tools out of the machine. The tool uh, capacity to do that production scenario is beyond what the machine can handle, so they'll pull tools out in a kit insert the other kit of tools to handle that seasonal volume. All of that data is managed through the cell control for tooling either going into physically or out of physically a machining center. So as that tooling uh, kit in my scenario is removed from the machining center, all the data stays resident in the MASA5 cell control in what we call a virtual tool crib. So as that toolkit is reintroduced physically into the machine, all that data does not need to be recreated. Another common scenario, offline presetters interface to the MASA5 uh, for electronic transmission of the tool data uh, saves from having to uh, manually enter that tool data. Uh, basically, that reader head or that uh, um, device that's on the tool presetter is interlinked into the MASA5, transmits the tool data over automatically. Moving over to fixture resource management, another area where uh, in cell operation we'll see um, the possibility for people to be inserting and uh, removing uh, materials from the cell. All the fixture resource management is done at the MASA5 cell control. The user interface assists operators with part loading and unloading. Again, think about that seasonal uh, scenario that I laid out early on. Maybe that operator hasn't seen the uh, fixture for the summer production in six months. Uh, maybe it's the first time um, that operators ever worked with a cell, uh, another scenario. The MASA5 has utilities built into it to allow for transmission of data to that operator really to ease that um, understanding of how to interface with the fixture with the parts that get loaded on it, a variety of different ways to do that. Um, when you set up the cell control, again, with our assistance at the onset, you can load work instructions, uh, pictures of how to interface with the fixture, videos of how to load the parts onto the fixture. Really, it's a very open uh, architecture from the standpoint of the variety of different uh, materials that you can insert into that MASA5 associated with that fixture to aid the operations. It provides control of work setting operations. Uh, you can set part status. You can control the clamp and unclamp quantities. Think about that as a uh, work holding fixture, maybe that has four nests on it, all for the same operation, but you only have to produce two parts. So you load a part into nest A, you load in a part into nest B, you leave C and D open, you tell uh, the cell control what's going on from the standpoint of A and B are loaded, C and D are open. That production order then with your program set up with the appropriate macros will only machine those two loaded nests and leave the other two nests alone so that you're not wasting uh, spindle capability, capacity, um, time to machine nests that are not physically loaded. You can set the pallet and fixture status. Is that fixture um, in good running condition? That's going to be the normal state. Does it need repair? 
does that fixture need to be changed over? Maybe there's a level of change over within the fixture itself to go from part variant A to part variant B. Give you a good idea of what that, that screen looks like. Again, that's where that data is going to be transmitted in a uh, text format to the operator with the backup of the uh, pictures, the video, the other uh, media that you might also insert in there to really drive home that point. User privilege management, we found, is very important from the standpoint of how uh, our customers like to use the MMC. Uh, basically, with user privilege, you have the ability to define users in the system on a person-by-person -person basis. So each user, then, as they log into the cell control, is assigned a unique set of um, privileges. Do they have the ability to make a, a NC program edit? Uh, maybe the manufacturing engineering staff does. Um, but the person who's uh, strictly responsible for part unloading and reloading does not have the ability. It gives you the flexibility to protect, protect the data that's in the uh, MASA 5 cell control on a person-by-person -person basis. Um, one point, there is no limit to the number of defined users. So as uh, maybe uh, things change within the plant as far as who has responsibility for working with that cell this week, this month, but it changes, um, you can keep that person uh, who's defined in the cell, since there's no limit on the number of users, keep them registered in there in the event that they eventually move back to the cell should they be redeployed to do something else within your production operation. Remote monitoring and operation uh, really focus towards the monitoring aspect. Uh, you can look at that equipment status uh, inside of your, your own internal corporate internet. That could be inside of your facility. Depending on your uh, setup, it could also give you access to looking at the cell to see what's going on from the standpoint of status outside remotely. Again, as you would expect, any PC that's connected to the network that's enabled, that will give you that access to view cell status. Let me kind of round out by talking about system support. Uh, the MASA 5 cell control has built-in communication capability that if you allow us on a case-by-case -case basis, we have the ability to log into the cell control, uh, say a situation comes up where you need some help understanding what's going on with the cell control, uh, we have that ability to look into it, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, only with your permission, uh, with that network connection to be able to do remote uh, viewing, remote diagnostics. Again, with your permission, we can do periodic software updates. We'll typically contact the customer, describe to them what it is that we would like to do from the standpoint of pushing a software update, what effect it will have on the customer, and then you have the decision point, do you allow that or do you not? Um, and then when you do allow it, once that software update is done, our access ceases. MASA 5 is a global software product, but with very heavy localized support out of McKino and Mason, Ohio. We have an engineering staff uh, here on premises that does nothing but MASA 5 uh, um, installations, uh, working with customers, led by a gentleman named Jeff Wilmus and his crew. They're the people that you'll interface with from the standpoint of initial cell configuration, all the way up to installation, training, and then the continued point of contact down the road. So with that um, capability that we have, we have the ability to customize many aspects of how MASA 5 works to fit your production needs. And local operations training is done by the McKino Mason staff. So the MMC2 in summary, it, it's designed to maximize spindle and resource utilization first and foremost. Gives you those centralized points of uh, parts coming in, parts coming out. Uh, minimizes the amount of work that an operator needs to do to keep up with multiple machines. It allows for very quick changeover of part types um, as your production needs change. It's customizable, very expandable. The cell control manages all of the data resources that are required uh, to um, run the production process and it allows complete control of production scheduling inside of the cell. One last point, it is a Makino product, so one-stop shopping up front, long-term maintenance from the standpoint of we stay with you uh, through the life uh, span of that product. 
So I just touched on some of the details of the uh, cell control. I'd like to invite you to join us on January 12th, scheduled at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, how to achieve up to 95% spindle utilization, really a deep dive in how MAS A5 works. Uh, case studies from the standpoint of what we've done with other customers, as well as a live demonstration out in our training area where we have an MMC2 cell uh, installed ready to go. If you're interested in getting more into detail, if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one session, those are available, uh, either with myself on the product management side or in conjunction with our systems engineering group to come in. If you have specific, um, what you think might be unique scenarios that you'd like to talk to us about on a one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, we are available to, the, to do that. Please contact your lo local Makino sales representative and they can easily set that up. We're more than happy to talk with you however you're most comfortable to do so. So thank you again. Uh, my name is John Einberger. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can at john.einberger at makino.com. You can also view more information about the uh, MMC2 as well as other automation solutions on the makino.com webpage under the Cells and Systems heading. Thank you. Okay, at the end of the uh, archive presentation, I referred to a January 2022 event that takes a deeper dive into how the uh, MAS A5 cell control allows its users to fully maximize machine capacity. I would like to um, uh, point out that you can find that event if you go to the makino.com webpage. If you hover over the resources header, slide over and click the webinar archive, and scroll down to what uh, actually is a January 18th event titled Achieve Up to 95% Spindle Utilization. At that point in time, you can play the video clip that comes up. So what I would like to do is address some questions that came in uh, during the uh, playing of the archive event that you saw here today. Uh, i got three in the queue right now. First question that came in, uh, the automation in the manufacturing cells, is it limited only to handling uh, fixtures and uh, work pieces, or can it be used for other tasks in the production process? Um, kind of a, a interesting question. Uh, we have seen requests in the past uh, for being able to send uh, work holding fixtures or more importantly, the work pieces onto ancillary operations, be it gauging, be it part washing, things of that nature. Uh, within the MMC system that I talked about specifically today, uh, we can't send those in specifically um, on a fixture, on a pallet. We just haven't found uh, systems out there that are really compatible with sending a fixture with a workpiece on it to do anything meaningful. Um, but what we have done in our hybrid system that's called an MMCR, where robotics are integrated into the cell, we do have the ability to send those workpieces, a little bit different setup, instead of a uh, traditional fixture on a traditional machining center pallet, that MMCR has a combination of work pieces on fixture subplates. Uh, we have had call to be able to send a work piece on a subplate into uh, follow on operations, be it assembly, uh, be it park aging. Or if we take the MMC that I talked about specifically and couple that directly with automation in the form of a robot, to do uh, automated part loading onto and off of the work holding fixtures, then we certainly can take those parts off of that work holding fixture, send them into downstream operations. So hopefully that answered the question and uh, touched on the aspects. Again, different ways that we can uh, integrate in that robotic automation into the MMC. All right, second question that came in today. Uh, is it possible to take a Makino machining center that starts out as a standalone entity and integrate that into the MMC? i uh, answer that question uh, resounding yes. Uh, we design the machining centers in such a way that they can be easily converted from standalone configuration to an MMC spec. If you recall the video where we saw uh, the part transiting down on the uh, work holding fixture, so that video transiting down in front of those machines, if you notice each of those machines had a very open style front end, the way the standalone machines are designed, very easy to convert to that open style front end. And that couples in uh, really with the third question that I have in front of me right now, 
what machine options should somebody consider when buying a machine to go into a cell like an MMC? Um, I would say that probably one of the more overriding considerations would be the size of the tool magazine. Uh, we probably have never heard a customer say uh, for a machine in an MMC, I bought too uh, big of a tool magazine, but certainly uh, we have customers that say maybe after the fact, I wish I had bought a bigger one. So uh, pretty high consideration when you're sourcing that equipment. Take a look at where you think that machine is going to be used, maybe at the onset of its integration into the MMC, but even down the road as your uh, production situation maybe continues to expand and really plan on the upside from the standpoint of that tool magazine size. All right, one more question just popped up. What is the common install time for a basic two layer uh, 12 pallet system? Ballpark number is fine. I appreciate that because that's about the best I'm going to be able to give you. Uh, typically, the machining centers um, themselves, depending on the configuration, uh, really driven around the size of the tool magazine machining center. Figure on those being about a one week entity to be installed. Uh, the MMC, uh, more along the lines of a two to three week install process uh, for a system. Um, again, two layer, 12 pallet, that's a pretty small system. So figure more on the two week side versus the three week. Okay, I've got one more. I've just been alerted, it came in uh, through the chat window. And is MMC suitable for three machines? Absolutely. Uh, can be single machine, two machines, three, four, all the way up to, I think, the uh, limit on the uh, machining centers, if I remember off the top of my head. Uh, we have seen systems with as many as 10 machines in them. Uh, the thing to be mindful of, we really need to do uh, a system simulation. Uh, when you start looking at uh, systems with, um, really, I'm going to say beyond four, beyond certainly beyond six machines, do a system simulation to make sure that uh, the system itself can keep up given the pallet times, given expected unload and reload times, that the system itself can keep up with the demands of every other um, piece of equipment in that cell so that we're not limiting cell throughput by the system capability to keep up. And usually when we do a simulation, the interesting thing that we find out is um, by adding more machines into the system, usually the demand that goes up, the demand point or the choke point becomes the work setting stations, the uh, uh, points in the system where that operator is loading parts, unloading parts, doing things of that nature, usually simply adding an additional work set station, which can be done. We can have up to four of those in a system uh, that alleviates those choke points. So yeah, three machines, no problem, can go well beyond that. All right, I don't see any other questions that have come in, but if something comes up later, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is John Einberger. I can be reached at john.einberger at makino.com. Uh, happy to address any questions, or if you're uh, more comfortable talking with your Makino rep, uh, talk with that person and have them for the questions to me either way, no problem. So we appreciate you joining us here today, uh, and we look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you.